Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Property Roundtable. Myself, Rama, Jackie, again, to share with you some knowledge and some insights to value add to your journey of buying a property in Singapore. Today, our topic is going to be something that is so talked about, but still, we get the question all the time. <laughs> <laughs> should, I, should I uh, be concerned with buying a 99-year lease whole landed versus a freehold landed property when uh when in Singapore. So, so before before we start, yeah. uh, just just um uh, a matter of uh, clarification. When we talk about ninety nine year leasehold landed, uh, we yes. are purely discussing or on landed property and not yes. cluster housing, right? Uh? Mm-hmm. Okay. Purely purely landed property. So leasehold landed is purely on ninety nine years leasehold. Yes, correct. So when we say about freehold landed, yes. it also include the nine 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 years leasehold lender, right? Yes, correct. Because right. to me, yeah. I don't know about you guys. Yes. I think majority of us, nine 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 year leasehold landed and freehold landed, they belong to the same category. Same mm-hmm. category. Okay. Same. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good clarification. As you can see, uh, we didn't prep much for this, so <laughs> that's why just, he's clarifying. Just, <laughs> just, just, just one one thing to note. Uh, yes. Just for uh, caveats. Yes. Okay. Uh, the nine nine nine. Start date cannot be nine hundred years ago, lah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, yeah, that's the only thing, ah. Uh. So yeah, so please buy the inlays and check. Okay. okay. Yeah. I don't know what goes on in the mind of the two of them, but uh, yes, that's also a very yeah. good point. Yes. So case in point, we're assuming that okay, lah, triple nine mm-hmm. year lease, so that's still substantial. A few uh, generations to go. Yeah, because <clears> in our old days when we talk about ninety nine year lease, so we're talking about three generations. So we are talking about at least quite a number of generations. Lah, oh. yep. So, um, yes. So, once again, um, back to topic, 99 versus freehold or anything above 99 in terms of leasehold when it comes to buying a landed. So, Rama, mm-hmm. what do you think of 99-year leasehold landed versus freehold? Bro, I think nothing. Today, I just think landed. Okay. Because everything landed you touch is expensive. <laughs> so what 99 freehold? Uh, everything also good. Uh. Correct. Yeah. So what you're saying is if your budget only allows you to look at in the landed space mm-hmm. something 99 year leasehold, it is a good to go for you. Mm-hmm. Okay. So what about Jackie? What do you think of 99 year leasehold versus freehold? Um, personally, if you are coming into the landed segment, uh, yeah, with um, exit point of capital appreciation, yes, yes, on your form of investment, <clears throat> personally, I think just stick with freehold. <laughs> okay, yeah. okay. Sorry, Rama, why why you? No, I, I thought he was going to say something else. <laughs> no, I thought it, it all started well. If it is from an investment point of view, it doesn't matter whether it's 99 okay. or freehold. Then suddenly you just say freehold, I got a shot. Okay. So now I got to ask you why. Okay. Because very, very clearly, right? um, we all know that 99 years is so, the, 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 the countdown started. Mm. Okay, the moment where the, the lease will start. Yes. So you will definitely reach a point where the decaying lease effect kicks in. Yes. Mm-hmm. And it's shown and it has been experienced that um, in Singapore, when the property run down to zero years, mm-hmm. yes, uh, it belongs to the government. Mm. Yes, correct. So, right? Everything yeah. goes back to the government and correct. then they redevelop it and they have mm-hmm. other plans for it. Mm-hmm. So in <coughs> such case, <clears throat> whether it is still wise if you are looking for investment property. Mm-hmm. Okay. But then again, on the contrary, if your needs is bigger than your wants, mm. um, you need to be staying in that particular location for whatever reason. You only have this amount of budget, but you need a bigger space to accommodate all your family. Or better still, you know, your kids are staying, yeah, are schooling in the next uh the, the, the school which is next to the to the yeah. property. Mm. So so be it, lah, you know, okay. fulfill your needs and then settle your wants elsewhere. You can go and buy mm. a small mm. condo freehold or what's not. Yeah. Yep. So personally, I grew up uh, in a, in my teen years in a 99-year leasehold landed. And um, unfortunately, when we sold it, it was not at the best time. And uh, it, we didn't uh, do 
well, I mean, from mm-hmm. a family perspective, not myself, but from my family perspective. So I actually put myself in a, a spot to think that if I were to look back at those years, if we had committed to a freehold landed, it would have been a winning, um, mm-hmm. it would have been a winning uh, position. So that being said, right, I think 99 year leasehold properties in Singapore uh it is always more apparent when it comes to landed that people have this discussion. If you go into the condo space, <coughs> if you go into the HDB space, uh, there is never this overhang. Yeah. 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 There is never a question of, oh, uh, Harvey, uh, 99 year leasehold can buy or not. I mean, everybody at some point in their life, most of us, 80% of Singapore people mm-hmm. stay in HDBs. Mm-hmm. And... Even for us, if we moved out of HDB, we are still even buying 99 year leasehold properties in the condo space. And then mm. saying that, uh, just yeah. recently, two days ago, yeah. the highest HDB has crossed <laughs> the 1.5 million mark. Yes. Uh, yeah? Yes. Left with 49 years yes. leasehold. Yes, left with 49 year leasehold. Um, a great location, great space, uh, big space, nicely done. So it's a clear indication that yeah. the buyer literally fulfilled the needs. Yes. Yep. Yeah, they don't care about the resale gain. They're going to Correct. anticipate. Mm-hmm. They just want to live it up or... Correct. Yeah. So, therefore, when it comes to this discussion, especially in a landed segment, which is why we're doing this video today, is there's tru- there truly is that way, that that burden of consideration when it comes to buying an annual leasehold property. Mm-hmm. So, I guess it is quite... Uh, that I, I, I believe that if you're in a segment of the market whereby it's all 99 years, it's, it's kind of like a herd effect. Mm-hmm. If today, if I were to be staying in, let's say, certain areas, I don't name the landed estate, but it's built by one developer. There are a few hundreds of units of 99 mm-hmm. year leasehold landed. Mm-hmm. So familiar. Yeah. In the West, in the East, right? Mm-hmm. Very famous. Yeah. Seems like when people buy in those clusters, right? Of, uh, I wouldn't, I shouldn't use the word cluster. Like, yeah. Don't. Be a little confused. Yeah. In those areas where it's all 99 year lease whole side by side, right? People don't seem to have as big of a concern because they feel like, hey, you know what? Hey, we are in this together, man. If the price <laughs> go down, we all die together. If the price go up, we all hot, hot together. together. <laughs> mm-hmm. right? Correct, correct. Right? correct. Yeah. But uh, if you have like a small group of 99 year lease hole in mm-hmm. a relatively large freehold community mm-hmm. in that district or in that landed mm-hmm. enclave, right? then people have this concern. So now maybe let me just part out deeper. Mm-hmm. So if in that landed enclave, there are more freehold over 99 year leasehold, mm-hmm. would your response still be the same? Mm-hmm. Would you then say, oh, um, yeah, I still go, I think 99 is still okay. I, I think I think you bring up a very, very good point. I didn't really think of this before, yeah. but now that you brought it up, if you look at 99 year lease, Clusters, as in, as in, not cluster landed, but the cluster of the enclave. Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. So, uh, say, let's take something for an example. Uh, Villa Verde. Mm. Yeah. Okay. There's hundreds and hundreds of houses there. Yes. yes. So they are all 99 year lease. Of course. Okay. <coughs> and they come in uh, different shapes, sizes. Yes. yes. But now the thing is this: since there are hundreds of them, the activity is also high. Yes. There's rental activities. There's sales activity. Price so there's a chance for yeah. the price movement to go up. Although yes. in the last Five years, it has really gone up. Yeah, of course. That's, that's yes. besides the point. But activity is very important. In one of our previous episodes, I think yes. I spoke about that. As well. When there's activity, yes. there's price movement, right? Yes. So as compared to what you said, if there's only a group of like 10 houses amongst all freehold, yes. how much of activity are we going to see there? Yes. Right. So the buyer who's going to buy there is now taking a risk. Yes. Yeah. Whether this would be good for him in the future yes. or not. Okay. Yeah. What about Jackie? In that same breath, like, Small group of 99 in a relatively large enclave of triple nine or freehold. I think very much um, it's still depending on what the buyers are looking for. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, if it's for pure home ownership, yes. They don't care about resale gain, they don't care about leaving a legacy behind, no passing to the next generation. Mm. I mean, why not? Just go into indulgement. Um, just just grab it and enjoy the lifestyle of the landed. It doesn't hurt your pocket at all. Mm-hmm. Huh? Yeah. Leave it up to, uh, to the end of the list. But if you have a true intention of leaving a legacy, mm. um, wanted to use this as a stepping stone to fulfill your mm. next dream house, then very much you will need to think deeper. 
Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Whether a freehold is suitable yeah. or getting this list all would be yeah. wiser. I I would share a very like a specific area just to give you color. I used to stay in this area called Tai King. It was a mm. landed. Mine was a freehold. Mm. Behind my house, right? Literally, right? There's mm. a row, a small little group of 99 year leasehold. Yeah. Oh. So when I, I know where is it? Yeah. Kalichap. Uh, yeah, Kalichap. Mm. Or, yeah. And if you look at the form and shape of the house, it was definitely buying the freehold, we were buying more like the land. Because mm. mm. the house was really old. Yeah. Buying the leasehold, you had a lot of house. Mm-hmm. And, but more importantly, right, when those people bought the leasehold, it was cheaper than the freehold mm-hmm. property mm-hmm. that I bought. They stay so, in the same area as you. They stay in the same mm-hmm. area. But when the price went up, right, mm-hmm. my, I mean, my price went up in the space mm-hmm. of like six years. Mm-hmm. But guess what? A few years later, mm-hmm. the leasehold properties then were trading like 1.4, 1.5. Mm-hmm. They also went up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And if you look from a percentage gain perspective, right, Mm. it's still not bad. Mm -hmm. But what's more important is that I feel that if you buy a 99-year lease Mm. whole landed, right, there is a hook. That means why everybody bought in that area was because it was within one click to Mm. Paya Lebar Methodist Girls Primary, Mm. right? And also one click within Maristella. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I realized also is if you buy a 99-year lease and you are concerned about your resale value, right? Mm. Then you must understand these two points and you must remember them very well. Yeah. One, it's if the 99-year leasehold landed is the cheaper option, but it's still within uh, one click to a very mm-hmm. good school, right? Mm-hmm. Fear not. Mm. Unless the school moves, there will always be demand, mm-hmm. right? And when the freehold value goes up, the leasehold will run as well. Yep. Mm-hmm. So it's two, cool, yeah. If you buy a 99-year leasehold property mm. in this area, mm-hmm. you, con- you, you can still keep it. Because mm. let's say today I buy a 99-year leasehold condo, then I would think, I, I just buy, then I can lease out. Uh. It will be an investment, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Why can't a 99-year leasehold property be your investment unit? Instead of buying a condo, yep. The 99 year lease will become an investment property. Of course, of course, yeah. because tenant yeah. from a tenant point of view, yes. they won't pay more for a freehold they, landed. They don't yes. care. They don't That's care. Right. Yeah, yeah, they don't care. Yeah. Mm. And if there's that hook of that school nearby, you will still have that strength of leasing out to parents who want to True. be within that school. Yep. Good point. So Good point. on mm. the same street that I was staying, mm. there were actually two families that were leasing mm-hmm. a landed property mm-hmm. because they needed to be in the school or within one click of Maristella. Mm. And once they stay, they actually stayed close to like seven years. Okay. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I even know one owner who bought property and leased out to the same tenant over the like three rental periods and eventually mm-hmm. sold it when the price went up as well. Mm-hmm. So therefore, I think <coughs> 99 year leasehold mm-hmm. versus freehold, I think there's a lot more consideration. But if you got all these points in your pocket, right, mm-hmm. I think can it can also be a very important factor to put in. Yep. And maybe I should also elaborate, maybe just one more question. Mm-hmm. So if today the 99-year leasehold landed, right, gives you that space that you need, mm-hmm. but the freehold one really doesn't give you the space that you need. No mm-hmm. matter how you cut left, cut right, cut front, cut back, right, mm-hmm. you just don't have enough rooms. Mm-hmm. Would you still go for the freehold? Because regardless whether what, what wealth preservation or that, you mm-hmm. just need that space, but you can't. Would you still make do? That, that really boils down to your needs. Uh. Yep. Mm-hmm. In, your, in, in, in now your situation is that your needs for the space mm. is greater than your want. Mm-hmm. So to settle or to fulfill these uh, needs, mm. you need to buy, you need to buy. Mm. Right? And you can buy as much as your pocket can allow you to. Mm-hmm. You have a budget constraint mm. and with such. So yeah, there's, you're practically left with no choice. Yeah. yeah I... I Sometimes I feel it's an aspiration for everyone to buy a landed. Of course. Okay, but once they buy the landed, then they live there, then they realize, hey, maybe this is not for me, like, it's too big, like, I know I need to do all these things, right? Yeah. But every buyer that comes to us, when you pose them a question, you're buying for what reason? Mm. They 
at the back of the mind, always as a Singaporean, right? I also need capital appreciation. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Right. I also need capital appreciation. So we know land is scarce, freehold is good, uh, it's wealth preservation, blah blah blah. But in the last five years, really, in the last five years, if you have noticed, right, ninety nine has done extremely well. Oh yeah. If yeah, you yeah, look right. at the percentage of increase in price, I tell you, they have outdone freehold actually. Yes. As a matter of fact, freehold has even helped them. I. It's it. You yeah, may yeah, ask yeah, yeah. which way it is. I think ninety nine moved up so high. That's the reason why freehold went even further. It's not yes. freehold went further and ninety nine followed suit. No, yes. it's ninety nine went up. Yeah. All right. So and one of the examples is serving this client. Okay, they they wanted to buy a penthouse. Then I said, hey, you guys just became Singaporeans. Why not buy a landed property? You can you can buy one. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they said, hey, yeah, oh, that's a good idea. Wow, I didn't realize that. Then they went to check. Of course, I post them all the freehold properties. Then the the husband asked me, hey, why we cannot buy 99? Then he said, why do you suddenly choose this? No, I saw this bungalow in Holland Green. Mm. The land size is 4,500. Mm. I was like, okay. It's 99 year lease and it's only like 4 million. Mm. At that point, this is about maybe 4 years, 5 years ago. Mm. Uh, I was like, uh, uh, <laughs> 4 million can buy freehold really. Yeah. But this is a bungalow. Okay. Detached house. Okay. Mm. okay. So we went to see these houses and they were beautiful. I mean, it was really nice. Holland Green is a beautiful of place. Course. Nah. Yeah, of course. All right, very atlas place as well. Yeah. Yeah. So we managed to see it was really huge and they fell in love with the house. And eventually we, we negotiated, we closed it at 3.95. Wow. Yeah. Bro, today is five point something. <laughs> so you know what? If I had said, no, sir, you don't buy this. This yeah. one will not appreciate. I would have been wrong. Correct, correct. Right? But in the last five years, 99 correct. did well. So now, I don't know how long they are going to stay there. Same thing for any other buyers like you yes. out there, right? You may want to stay there and you see this price increase six million. Hey, it's time for me to exit. Mm -hmm. uh, enough of this lifestyle. Okay. Yes. Maybe I take this six million, I buy a freehold property for three. Yeah. True. Or three point something, which is the market now for entry into a freehold, right? True. true. Yeah. So that is possible. So if you had done this move mm. by choosing a 99 first and then coming back to freehold, it's also possible. So it's all about stepping stone. Right? Yeah, yeah, stepping exactly. Stone. Yeah. 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 Well, I think I think one one very important factor is um uh you got to look at how many years lease remaining? Absolutely, yeah. That's that's that's, mm. that's a good one. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you ask me, um, anything that is above sixty years, I would seriously give it a good consideration. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Anything below fifty years, mm -hmm. I have to think twice. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, in a nutshell, there's a lot more um, considerations when it comes to ninety nine. Mm -hmm. um, I think one bonus tip that uh, I we have discussed this before and just Many to, a time. <laughs> yeah let you guys know as well when you buy a 99 year leasehold property right in a relatively freehold area and you and you still want to see this as not your end game right it's just for your needs like what Jackie said or even as an investment or like Rama said right but one very key thing is that you may not be able to time your own exit the mm. market will determine for you. Why do I say this? Because if the market rises, right, and then it plateaus, let's say generally in the last two years landed, um, pricing has gone up relatively significantly. And this is the time you will notice that a lot of leasehold properties are out mm. in the market, right? They dovetail the growth of freehold. So assume the market doesn't grow for the next 10 years, which I doubt so. But mm. if it happens, right, the next upturn of where the property prices go up again and landed goes to a new price point again. Right? Be a very good exit point. That will be a yep, good exit absolutely. point. Yeah. Yep. So you may have to buy your time and when that day comes, right, you see the markets moving, that's when you can consider mm -hmm. to trade out your property mm -hmm. if at a price even higher than what you bought. And yep. more importantly, someone's going to pay you to stay there because the money that you spend, right, you're mm -hmm. just going to get it all back. Although by inflation, it's going to be smaller mm, sure. but from a psychological standpoint you may not have paid a single day in a landed mm, property mm. so in summary today i mean once again this is a perpetual question that we face and this is a perpetual dilemma mm -hmm. for especially for the <laughs> the new entry uh entries to the new buyers into the mm -hmm. landed segment you are not alone mm -hmm. um this will continue to be something that's going to weigh on your mind but if you caught the gist of what we've been saying in the last 20 minutes, then it's good to know that there will be opportunities for you to 
exit if that's your concern. Yeah. And even if you don't, you can treat it like an investment property. Mm. To rent it out. lease it out. Mm. Or yeah. you can <coughs> treat it like any other 99 year leasehold property that you bought in a condo space. Assuming it's the same number of years. Mm-hmm. La. So hope that the above video gave you a little bit more comfort, a little bit more value eh, in, or a little bit more things to back up your decision. Eventually, if you do pull the trigger to buy a 99 year lease whole land in Singapore. So thanks for watching. And if you do like what we've shared so far, like, share, subscribe, and continue to throw questions at us so that we are able to curate a better content list and the videos that we put forth will be answering your question and of course perhaps around you many more of other people have the same questions as well so we do help that we can value it to you thank you thank you